Hello, everyone. Welcome today to our first info session of the 2023-2024 school year. Um, this will be for fall 2024 for our next incoming cohort. Um, we are so excited to welcome you all here today um, as we talk about the Master of Social Work program at the Brown School at Washington University. Um, we are ready to go ahead and get started. So, Cece, next slide if you can. So we wanna first start by just um, welcoming you all, of course, to this space and thanking you for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, we'll introduce ourselves first and then we will dive into um, all the content for today. And thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions ahead of time. We're gonna answer those as we go along today and then also have saved a few for the end. So um, first of all, hi, my name is Shana Peterson. I use she, her pronouns. I am an admissions and recruitment specialist with the Office of Admissions at the Brown School. Um, I'll pass it over to Zizi to introduce herself. Thanks, Sheena. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome again. My name is Ziji Shi Shili. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm currently the manager of global programs at the Brown School. I'm also the co-host of today's session. Um, we will be covering the overview of the Master of Social Work program at the Brown School. Um, again, uh, welcome and very happy to see you all here. Sheena. All right, so I think actually... Zizi is going to start us off talking about um, the Brown School. Yeah, thanks, Shana. All right, um, so as we get started with the info section today, um, I would like to cover just a really brief overview of the mission and the vision at the Brown School. So one thing you will notice about the Brown School, so whether you are browsing our web page or speaking to the faculty, staff, and or students is that we are dedicated to equity and committed to impact. These are the values that you will hear often when we talk about our school, but what does that mean? Um, simply, our faculty and staff members are committed to transferring the research we do into actionable solutions and bring these solutions into communities where they are most needed. We want the meaningful changes that positively impact our community. Now, as the audience members, you may be wondering how you can be part of this impact. Um, luckily for you, the Brown School has programs in place that can help you be part of an amazing community while accomplishing your personal career and academic goals. Master of Social Work program is one of them. So currently we have social work, public health and social policy programs at the Brown School. We believe that the fields of social work, public health, and social policy are intrinsically linked and complementary fields that which share values and objectives. And this quote in the slide from our Dean Traub highlights a universal theme that Brown School faculty, staff, and students trying to achieve, making the extraordinary possible. And now, we will be going into more detail about these numbers at the Brown School to show our diverse uh, community as we move forward today. So here is our final 2023 cohort numbers. And we are really proud of our student body and all of the different experiences and backgrounds they represent. We're constantly evaluating our admissions and enrollment process to make sure the Brown School is as representative and accessible as possible. And now I'm going to pass this to Shana to talk about our amazing MSW program highlights. Thanks, Susie. So before we dive into just kind of like the logistics and the mechanics of the MSW program, we want to just talk briefly about our curriculum in general. So as you can see, our curriculum was really designed to be different. Um, go ahead, Zizi. Thanks. Um, first of all, we take an evidence-based approach to practice. That means that our curriculum, our practice, our interventions, they're all driven and informed by research. 
Our curriculum is also grounded in driving social, racial, economic, environmental, and health equity. Um, this all reflects the Brown School's strategic plan, which is called Driving Equity 2030. Um, students here also learn through an anti-oppressive framework, meaning that we focus on advancing the voices and needs of marginalized communities. We also take a transdisciplinary problem-solving approach, meaning that students learn to examine the issues and approach problems um, from a, a really multifaceted interdisciplinary perspective. Um, and then we ground our curriculum in flexibility, which is what we'll talk about next. So our MSW program is a full-time two-year program. Um, we've outlined here just kind of what each year will look like for you as you think through um, your credits and the classes and the field experiences that you'll have. Um, in year one, you're really going to be focusing on, on your foundation level courses. You'll take 21 credits worth of courses um, and really learn that good foundational um, knowledge for your Master of Social Work um, education. The second year um, is focused more on your concentration level courses. Again, you'll take 21 credits of concentration level courses. We'll talk about concentrations in just a moment, but this is where you really start to dive into um, the more specialized courses that will um, that will apply even more to your, to your career and to your time after graduation. As you can see, you actually have two practicum experiences while you're at the Brown School. Um, so first you have your, um, what we call the foundation practicum. That's four credits. It's three credit hours of field education and one credit hour of a seminar that goes along with that to kind of um, help process all the things that you're experiencing in your practicum. Um, practicum is another word for field education, for internship. ZZ is gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but like I said, you do start that in your first year. You'll start that um, in the spring of your first year and continue that throughout the semester. Your second practicum is called your concentration practicum. Um, it's a little bit longer, um, five credit hours or 600 hours total. That is something that you'll complete beginning in the fall of your second year and going all the way through to graduation. So it's a, a full year of field education there where you're, you're really getting a lot more experience in your concentration area. Um, and then at the bottom there, you can see that you have nine credits reserved for elective courses. Those can be completed in year one or year two. A lot of them are probably going to be completed in year two um, because that's when you'll have even more flexibility there and you'll have um, your prerequisites completed with your foundation courses. Um, but elective courses are really there for you to um, just kind of have some fun, honestly, just, you know, take some classes that might be um, outside of your concentration. You can use those elective credits to specialize in something. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, we also have several um, one credit hour courses that we call skill labs. Those are um, shorter classes, usually like weekend classes and um, opportunities for students to just kind of get in this intensive environment to hone in on a specific skill, whether that be um, maybe like art therapy or grant writing or data visualization, something like that. Um, you can also use elective courses um, to take classes outside of the MSW program. Maybe you want to take a social policy class or a public health class or um, a class at the business school or the law school. Those opportunities are there as well. So um, overall, the curriculum is really designed to, you know, first and foremost, um, get you the skills and the education and the knowledge that you need to complete your MSW and enter the field, but then also to provide you really as much flexibility as possible so that you can really make this experience your own. Next slide, please, Yuki. Thanks. Um, so I just mentioned um, concentrations and specializations. We wanted to talk about those briefly. Um, the, the Brown School has options for eight different concentrations. Think of a concentration um, like your major in your undergraduate program. A concentration is required of all MSW students. Specializations are kind of like a minor, so they are optional, um, but they are an option for you to specialize um, in another um, field or subject that's outside of your concentration. So 
I'll go through each of these. Um, first of all, our eight different concentrations. Um, first of all, the American Indian and Alaska and Alaskan Native concentration. Within this concentration, we have three different um, tracks. First of all, the direct practice trauma-informed track. Um, that would be for students who plan to work with AIAN communities coping with trauma through a direct practice lens. Secondly, um, within that concentration, we have a direct practice behavioral health track. That would really be for students who want to work with AIAN communities who are experiencing mental health and substance abuse conditions through a direct practice lens. And then third, we have a community track within that concentration, and that is really for students who plan to work in community building, capacity development, leadership, asset building, those types of things within AIAN tribes and communities. So we did have a question um, pre-submitted that, like, what was the difference between those tracks? So hopefully that gave you some um, more context there and some more information. Um, I think a lot of those are, the the differences are, are um, you know, it depends really on like what your goals are. So um, one thing you can do is contact our office and we can talk more individually with you about your career goals, what you're interested in studying, population you're interested in working with. And then um, we can also connect you with um, maybe a faculty member who works within that concentration and they can, they can help you um, really decide between those tracks as well. Um, secondly, we have our children, youth and families concentration. Um, next is our health concentration. Next, we have our mental health concentration. This is another concentration that has a few different track options within it. Um, mental health is one of our more popular concentrations. So within that, you can focus on one of three tracks. First is our clinical social work track um, for students who plan to work with older adults or adolescents experiencing mental health conditions through that direct practice lens. The second track option is child behavioral health. That is for students who plan to work with children experiencing mental health conditions through that direct practice lens. And then the third track option in mental health is the clinical social work in substance use disorder treatment. Mm -hmm. And that is for students who plan to work with older adolescents or adults experiencing substance use disorders. Um, and then graduates of that particular track are able to earn the certification for the National Certification Commission for Addiction Professionals. So that's important to know if that is your intended career track. Um, we also next have our social and economic development concentration with a domestic focus. We also have a social and economic development concentration with an international focus for folks who want to work um, maybe overseas or maybe they're an international student coming from overseas who plans to work back in their home country um, or just in some kind of international um, landscape. Um, our next concentration is our social impact leadership concentration. This has two tracks. Um, first is our innovation and social entrepreneurship track. And second is the organizational leadership track. And then finally, if none of those fit with your goals or, you know, maybe you want to do all of them and you can't really decide or, um, you know, some other reason, we also have an option for an individualized concentration. And so that is really um, working with your academic advisor and your faculty advisor to create your own concentration. Um, examples of that might be um, if you want to work with refugees and immigrants, um, maybe you want to work with um, you know, women specifically, those are just a couple of examples, but that individualized concentration is there um, to provide even more flexibility for students. And then as you can see our specializations, we also have eight, eight different options for specializations. Um, first is our management. Second is our older adults and aging societies. We have a policy specialization, research specialization, um, sexual health and education, which I do want to point out that the Brown School is one of the only MSW programs in the country that has a sexual health and education specialization. So that is quite popular. Um, and a lot of students come to the Brown School to take advantage um, of, of that specialization offering. Um, we also have social entrepreneurship system dynamics, and finally, violence and injury prevention as a specialization. So lots of different options here. And again, you don't have to specialize in something, you know, maybe you are mental health concentration and you want to take, 
your elective classes, one in management, one in research, and one in system dynamics. That is an option for you as well. So lots of different options um, with our flexible curriculum. We also wanted to talk about our advanced standing MSW program. So the first slide that I went through with our full-time two-year program is for non-advanced standing students who are coming into the Brown School. Advanced standing students um, enter the Brown School with an undergraduate degree in social work. So um, the first section up here on this slide, you can see how to determine your eligibility. So first of all, um, you need to have earned your BSW from a CSWE accredited institution or program within the past six years. Um, I do want to point out that international students or students who earn a BSW at an institution outside of the U.S., may also be eligible for advanced standing if you've completed the CSWE International Social Work Degree Recognition and Evaluation Service. That's a mouthful. The, um, the acronym is ISWDRES. If you're an international um, student with a social work undergraduate degree, you're probably familiar with that, um, but please contact our office if we can, if we can help with that um, eligibility. Um, after that, the content of each course does need to be consistent with the Brown School's MSW coursework. And then finally, you need to have received a B or higher in the courses um, in order to, to receive credit coming into the Brown School. So advanced standing students will submit the same application. This was also a question you received. You'll submit the same application that full-time MSW applicants submit. We will just um, have a section on your application for you to indicate the courses that you've taken. Um, and then our admissions team will kind of cross-reference those um, with your transcripts. So um, we've also included down here the different course sequencing options for advanced standing students. You have two options here, as you can see, option number one, our 12 month track. It's fast, it's a lot, it gets you in and out. Um, it saves you time, it saves you money. It doesn't have quite the flexibility of our second option, but this is um, you know, a great option for students who are ready to come in and just hit the ground running. So that first option, 12 month track, it, takes, it involves two full academic semesters and then practicum and coursework in the summer. And then our second option, as you can see, is a six month, 16 month track. This will have you graduating in December, um, not the first December, but the second December after you begin. Um, and with this, you'll complete three full academic semesters and then your practicum and coursework is also completed over the summer. So that option of course is a little bit longer. You have a little bit of flexibility there with possibly changing your concentration if needed um, and taking you know, full advantage of all of the resources and opportunities at the Brown School. Um, it just is a little bit longer there. So those are, those are the two advanced standing um, track options that we have. And then finally, we also wanted to talk about two other options for our MSW students. First of all is our part-time MSW program. This is a fantastic option for students who um, are local in St. Louis or you know, are in, in the surrounding area and have the ability to get to campus on a regular basis. Um, this, this program takes three to three and a half years to complete. It is a year-round program, meaning that you would be taking courses during the fall, spring, and summer semesters with short breaks in between those semesters. Um, the combination of classes will be in person and remote, synchronous and asynchronous, and then weekly and weekend class formats. Um, and then finally, maybe most importantly, the, um, the part-time MSW is, takes a cohort model, which means that you start with the same students and you are a cohort and you move through the whole program together. So you have um, almost all of your classes together, certainly all of your classes um, in the first year to year and a half together. And then once you get into your different concentrations, um, you'll have a little bit of variety there, but um, it's really intended to create um, to create a cohort so you form really deep relationships with your, um, your other students in your cohort. We also have several um, MSW dual degree programs um, that are options for students who want to stay at the Brown School for even longer, or want to stay in school and um, complete another graduate degree along with your MSW. Um, so within the Brown School, you can do your MSW along with 
our other two degrees. So you could do an MSW and a public health degree or an MSW and a social policy degree. And then we also have partnerships with, with other schools at Washington University and also with um, a local theological seminary, even theological seminary. So with these partnerships, um, Brown School MSW students are able to do um, an additional graduate degree outside of the Brown School on an accelerated timeline. So for example, a law degree would typically take four years and then the MSW would take two. So um, six years total. I'm sorry, it would take three. The law degree would take three years. The MSW would take two years. So five years total. But if you do the dual degree program, you can complete both of those degrees in four years. So you save some time, you save some money, um, and you're able to get a really nice, well-rounded, um, integrated um, degree program in education. So I've listed out um, the different dual degree programs that we have. You can see we have social work and business, um, social work and education, um, law, architecture, urban design, and then our partnerships with um, Eden Theological Semin Seminary. As you can see, um, you can complete your MSW with a divinity degree or with a master's in professional studies. And with that, I'm going to stop talking and pass it back over to ZZ. Thanks, Sheena. So now let's talk about um, field education. Field education or practicum is part of all Brown School programs, an important part of connecting your classroom learning to the field, um, developing your skills and real world experiences, and build, building your professional network. MSW students complete two practica, one three credit 360 hour foundation practicum in the first year, followed by a five credit six, 600 hour concentration practicum in the second year. Um, we have a dedicated office of field education guide you as you select a field work site that aligns with your career goals and interests. Dedicate your time in a place that will help you to develop a skill set to set you apart in the job application process, learning job search skills, and so on. In addition, we offer foundations of field course to help you better navigate the entire process. At the Brown School, um, students have unique opportunity to select their own practical sites, which means that we do not assign students to specific practica. Students are responsible for selecting their own practicum experience, and this self-directed process offers tremendous options and flexibility. Our students complete practica locally, nationally, and globally. Currently, we have over 400 local, national, and global active sites, and we work with them closely to help students gain meaningful professional experience. In recent years, uh, some MSW students have complete practica in the following fields, including clinical practice, policy and advocacy organizations, nonprofits, and community development organizations. And here are some examples for your reference. Now, I'm going to pass it back to Shana to talk about our student center approach and how we support students through the academic um, work here. Thanks, Susie. So you might be listening to this presentation and thinking like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot for a year, a year and a half, two years longer. How am I going to do this? Um, we've got you. <laughs> we have what we take, we call a holistic advising approach um, to support you through your time at the Brown School. So with this approach, um, you'll have a network of support um, that's really just there to offer you guidance throughout the time that you're um, that you're at the Brown School. So as you can see, we have you'll have three different advisors during your time. Um, first is your academic advisor. This person is really there um, for the nuts and bolts, really to just to ensure that you have um, registered for the classes that you need to successfully complete your degree. This person is well versed on the academic support and resources that you'll need. Um, maybe you need some extra help with writing or statistics or, you know, any other um, 
any other resource, that person can be a great connection for, for those resources. And then our academic advising team is also available um, for academic advising drop-in hours to really provide um, a lot of available support for students. Second, we have your faculty advisor. This person is a faculty member and typically will be in your concentration. Um, and they are there to connect your in-classroom learning to your out-of-classroom experiences to really just bridge that gap, help you kind of like process what you're learning, um, maybe talk about career goals, serve as a mentor throughout your Brown School experience, um, be a go-to person for you, just to be that kind of um, like well-rounded well full advisor for you. And then finally, you have a field education advisor. This um, is a member of our field education team. We just saw all of their faces on a few slides um, before this one. Um, that person is really there to support you as you choose a practicum site, first and foremost, and then to help you identify goals for your practicum experience. They're there to serve as a conversation partner, to talk through difficult or new experiences um, in the field, in your practicum. And then just like our academic advising team, our field education team also has daily drop-in hours for you, um, just so that you're always able to reach someone from the field education team. Next, we want to talk about another support that will be here for you as a student, and that's our faculty. Um, and along with that, the research opportunities that are available to you. Um, WashU is a premier research institution, and the Brown School certainly contributes to that um, in, in many, many ways. Um, our faculty, as you can see, many of them have been named as um, part of the world's top 2% of scientists. They are truly renowned scholars who, again, are there to serve as your mentors and your advisors. Um, again, you'll be paired with a dedicated faculty advisor who's aligned with your concentration um, to connect you to the world of practice and also leading practitioners around the world. Um, as you can see, we have an eight to one student to faculty ratio. We, we really hope that our faculty members are accessible to students. Um, and really there um, to support you through these two, probably two years that you'll be connected to our school. Um, we have over 20 research centers and three community-based research initiatives, all of which offer opportunities for student involvement. And then finally, we have over 180 paid student research positions. Um, so those can be working, um, primarily working as a research assistant um, in one of those research centers. But then we also have other research opportunities for students to get involved in. Those might include um, an independent study with a faculty member, a research-oriented practicum, um, co-presenting at a conference, maybe co-authoring a paper, and then potentially another part-time research-focused job. And then we also wanted to talk a little bit about career, your career. I know most of the people on this call, actually probably everyone on this call is you know, starting the, the graduate school application experience, maybe even just starting to think about graduate school. But from day one, we are really here to support you in your career. And that is through the Center of the Center for Career Engagement. Um, this is um, a central office at Washington University. They're a dedicated partner for all of the schools at the university. And then we have um, dedicated Brown School a dedicated staff at the, the Career Center who is there to focus on Brown School students and alumni. So you can see there are just a whole host of ways that you'll support, be supported from day one. That, would, that includes um, resume review sessions, one-on-one -on -one advising, mock interviews, lots of career fairs. Um, we actually just started our fall 2023 cohort and the Center for, for Career Engagement has already hosted um, several career fairs for students. Um, they host pop-up events, alumni gatherings, video tutor tutorials to help students, and then much more. They really are available to students um, you know, in so many different ways. And they are going to be there for you as a resource forever. <laughs> Once you're an alumni, you receive support from us um, indefinitely to help with your career. So we make that lifelong commitment to all of our students. And then finally, we wanted to include 
one more slide here just to represent all of the other different teams and offices um, and support services that are available to you as a student because at the Brown School, we really do try to take a student-centered approach so that you can get the most out of your experience here and really be prepared for your career in the field. So each of these um, green rectangles represents a team or an office or some type of support that, that is here for you. We have our Office of Diversity, Inclusion and Equity, our student affairs team, um, many student groups, special programs for students. Um, we have our Office of Global Programs to support all of our international students and um, students who are wanting to study abroad and um, all of the other things that encompass the international student experience. Um, we have our own Office of Student Financial Services, our Center for Career Engagement that I just discussed. We have the Graduate Student Center that is actually part of Washington University as a whole. So that student center serves all of the graduate students throughout all of Washington University, not just the Brown School. So that's an important thing to remember is that you are a Brown School student and you have, you know, your Brown School community here, but there is a much bigger um, student body that's part of WashU. So you're, you're part of that graduate student body as well. Um, we have a stat lab that specifically is to help students with statistics work. Our communication lab and our writing center, those are available um, for students um, to help with papers and writing. And you'll do a lot of that here. Um, so those are great resources for students. Um, we have professional development programs um, where students can for free or for um, a discounted rate attend, you know, a variety of professional development um, seminars and, and events that are at the school. We have our own in-house library at the Brown School with dedicated librarians and staff who are, are here just for Brown School students. So they are just a, a fabulous resource as you're learning and doing research papers and all of that kind of stuff. And then of course we have our holistic advising approach that I went through a few moments ago, um, which is really there to help you, you know, with, with everything you need, putting all those puzzle pieces together for, for your time here. And I'm gonna pass it back to you, Zizi. Thank you so much, Sheena. So now let's talk about um, funding your degree. Um, financial consideration is a big component for the application. So first of all, um, let's look at the tuition and fee totals for this academic year. Know that these are our tuition prices for the total year. So tuition per semester would be total amount divided by two. Um, besides the tuition cost, if you would like to have more information regarding the cost of attendance here at the Brown School in St. Louis, you're also welcome to use the link in the chat for further reference. Funding your degree. Again, we really recognize that funding a graduate degree can be a significant investment, whether here at the Brown School or elsewhere. We received many pre-submit questions regarding the funding opportunity before the session, and I'm hoping the following information can be helpful. Brown School students typically fund their degrees through a combination of sources, including scholarships, part-time employment, and etc. We are thrilled to offer partial scholarship and encourage students to look for external funding opportunities as you consider our program. If you wish to be considered for scholarship support from the Brown School, please indicate this on your program application and you will be asked to submit an additional scholarship consideration form when seeing the application materials section of the application. And we will use this together with your full uh, application to determine your award. This form will ask you to share more details about your unique financial situation. I'm proudly to say that 100% of our students who request scholarship support we receive an award. Requesting financial aids does not impact your admissibility. Other funding sources, including scholarships from external organizations, federal work study, federal study loans, and part-time employment. 
we do want to know that many of our brown, uh, many of our students do work part time, whether on or off campus. On campus, there are simple campus positions, including um, many opportunities Shana just mentioned, such as research assistant positions under so many research center here at the Brown School and WashU. There are also some administrative assistant positions, such as student ambassadors position at the admissions office. For international students, you are allowed to work um, on campus and there are plenty of opportunities for you as well. And next slide, I'm gonna pass it back to Shana. Thank you, Susie. So we are actually nearing the end of our presentation. Um, I know we included a lot of information there, so we wanted to give you enough, but not you know overload you. So hopefully that gave you um, just a great introduction and understanding of our MSW program and maybe what it's like to be a Brown School student. Um, we would love to invite you to join us again this fall for um, some info sessions. And then of course, we would love to invite you if you see a fit to apply to our MSW program um, or any of our programs, but we're talking specifically about MSW today. So um, we wanted to um, give you a few important dates here. So mark your calendar, our application deadlines. This is for all of our applications. Um, December one is our priority or early action deadline. March 1 is our regular decision deadline. And then after March 1, we will still accept applications and we will um, admit students on a rolling basis. So the important thing I would say about December 1, um, if you can, if you're able to get your application in by then, it does offer you the opportunity for you know, the most robust funding packages because we have all of our funding still available at the beginning of the year. Um, we also guarantee that any student who applies by December 1 will receive their admission decision by February 1. So you'll receive your, your decision um, you know, fairly early in 2024, giving you lots of time to, you know, visit campus if you'd like to attend our admitted students weekend, which will be in the spring, um, to really just think through your decision um, and give you as much time as possible to make that decision, um, which is such an important one. So those are our application deadlines. Um, yeah. We hope to review your application. Uh, we have some more virtual info sessions coming up this fall. So just in a couple of weeks here on September 27th, we'll be talking about our Master of Public Health program and do, um, doing an introduction to that. On October 18th, we have an info session all about tips for submitting your strong or a strong application. October 18th is about six weeks before that first priority action, early action deadline. So that's a, a great info session to attend. Um, November 1st, we'll be talking all about our international student experience at the Brown School. And then on November 15th, we have a really fun one. I always like this info session. Ask us anything. What's on your mind? What questions do you still have? Um, how can we help? So that's just kind of a, a free for all, all encompassing. Um, ask us anything. So we would love to see you at any of those info sessions um, coming up here. And then in the meantime, we also have lots of other opportunities for you to connect with us at the Brown School. Um, if you want to scan this code, this will take you directly to our contact page on our website um, where you can schedule a, um, a virtual or an in-person visit. We're doing both of those. Um, you can just connect with the admissions team. You can connect with Zizi, with myself, um, with any of our, our other staff members who can answer your questions. Um, you can also talk to a current student. Zizi mentioned a couple of moments ago that we have that um, a job opportunity for students is to work as a student ambassador in the Office of Admissions. So we have a great, um, a great team of student ambassadors who are here to meet with students and answer all your questions about what their experience was like applying, um, deciding to attend the Brown School, and now ultimately attending. So we would love to connect you really with anyone who would be most helpful to you. Um, the best way to reach us really is that email address right there at the bottom, um, brownadmissions at woostle.edu. If you send an email to that, 
you'll be directed to the, the best person um, to help you. And then we also wanted to let you know that we have our, um, our YouTube page at Wustel Brown School. On our YouTube page, you'll find lots of stuff, um, all sorts of admissions videos with this info session, um, prior info sessions from prior years. Um, there's also just lots of um, other Brown School content on there, professional development seminars, um, lots of stuff like that, just to give you an, an even better sense of like what's going on at this school. So that's a, that's a fun thing to check out in the meantime as well. And with that, we are finished. So um, we wanted to um, here at the end, just go through a couple of questions that were submitted ahead of time. So Zizi and I, um, we're gonna go ahead and answer those. Zizi, I'll let, I'll let you start with that. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Shana. So we do have a lot of questions um, regarding the application fee waiver. So I wanna say the application fee waiver will be automatically applied on your application. So when you um, are towards the end of the application, so after you submit your recommendations, you will be asked if you are a member or alum of any of the following groups, um, including like services, um, corps members or alumni of WashU, member of other academic scholar programs such as um, Fulbright Scholar. So those are the um, the eligible groups of members who can apply for the application waiver. And also, um, if you have um, just really significant financial hardship, you can always request request a um, application waiver through um, our email, Brown Admissions. So if you're not sure, you know, whether you are eligible for the application waiver, you are always welcome to connect with us so we can have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation for the eligibility. So that's a question and answer about the application fee waiver. And then I will pass it back to Shana. Thanks, Susie. Um, so we also got um, a couple of questions about our 3-2 program. So this program is designed um, exclusively for Washington University undergraduate students. So 3-2 is the program that allows you to earn both your undergraduate degree and a master of social work degree in five years, um, three years as an undergraduate and then two years at the Brown School. So um, again, that's um, specifically for WashU undergraduate students. So um, if you wanna learn more about that, please email us at the um, Brown admissions at wustel.edu and we can connect you with um, the appropriate representatives to kind of talk through um, like the requirements, make sure that you're taking the classes that you need to take to, to do that. That's Those are better better conversations to have sort of one-on-one -on -one so that we we understand like your, where you're at in school and um, you know the, the specific requirements that you need to focus on. Um, we also had a question about employee tuition discount. So if you are a WashU, um, a WashU employee, a full-time WashU employee, you might be eligible for the employee tuition discount, which is a great resource. So again, that is um, kind of an individualized answer. So I would encourage you to reach out to us, connect with our office. We've worked with several students who are WashU employees to complete um, the MSW degree. So reach out to us and we can kind of talk you through the specifics of that as well. Um, I'll pass it back to you, Zizi. Thanks. Um, so our next question is, how many graduate assistant positions are accepted each term? So I would say um, this is a really broad question and great question as well. Um, first of all, the teaching assistant positions here at the Brown School are only reserved for um, PhD students. And but we require uh, we recommend master students applying to uh, applying to other um, graduate assistants positions such as research assistant positions. Um, from our previous years data, um, like Shanna mentioned earlier, um, we have over one hundred and eighty um, RA positions offered in the past per year at the Brown School. But um, for students, especially for um, like domestic students, you are not just limited to the Brown School. Um, all Brown School students are eligible to apply for RA positions here at the Brown School or 
um, watch you wide. So we strongly um, encourage students to reach out to our office for further part-time opportunities so that we can connect you with um, students who have part-time uh, experiences. We can connect you with some of the washer platforms like Handshake so that you can have a sense of you know, how many um, positions are offered and how can be a successful candidate to get an RA. Um, I also wanna um, provide one note is that all international students are eligible to work on campus here at WashU. So um, it is, you know, possible to have a position here. And then I will um, answer the next questions. Um, this question is a little bit specific. Um, so the question is that I'm interested in the social economic development international program. Um, I would say concentration. So are there any language requirements or opportunities available to learn a new language through the school or program itself? So first of all, there's no language requirements for I, um, international social economic development concentration, um, but students do have opportunity to take the language courses here at WashU, um, or you are also um, you can also explore the global opportunities such as global practicum or global courses in an international set settings. So these are um, some um, academic opportunities that you can get involved with Spanish speaking um, countries. Um, for example, like in, fall, uh, in spring 2024, um, we will offer some global courses such as in Colombia to learn about their um, refugee policies there. So students are strongly encouraged to take this partially compensated um, international courses. So um, that's it uh, for um, these questions. And if you have further questions regarding, um, you know, international opportunities, you are welcome to connect with us at the Global Programs Office. Um, we can, you know, help you further from there. And now I'll pass it back to Shana. Thanks, Zizi. Uh, we just had one final question um, that was pre-submitted that we wanted to answer. And this was about um, our dual degree program. Someone asked about um, the dual Juris Doctorate, JD, and social work program. So um, that is, and like I said before in one of the, the slide about the dual programs, um, the benefit of doing the dual program is that you can obtain both of your graduate degrees um, from the same school or from a partnership that we have um, in the curriculum and the course sequencing is very integrated. Um, and you, of course, complete it on an accelerated timeline, saving time and money. So the JD MSW program specifically is a four year program. Um, you ideally start with the Brown School for year one, and then years two and three, you'll complete at the law school. And then your fourth year, you'll split between the two schools. So that's one thing to know about our, our dual degree is that um, all of our dual degrees, like the, the course sequencing is integrated, but you do spend um, at each semester at one specific school. So you'll be taking all of your classes at the Brown School or all of your classes at the law school. So um, the two, so the, a couple other things to know about dual degree is that you do need to be, um, you do need to apply and be admitted to each program separately. So if you're interested in um, the JD program or maybe the MBA or, you know, the Master of Education, you need to um, be in contact with those programs as well to make sure you're understanding their application requirements and their deadlines and things like that. Um, if you're not sure who to contact at those programs, please reach out to us. We have partnerships with all of those dual degree partners. So we would be more than happy to connect you and put you in touch with, um, with those programs. But again, you do need to apply and be admitted to both programs. Um, you will receive um, you know, separate scholarships. If you request scholarship support, you'll receive separate scholarships to each program. And then um, whatever, whatever school you're, you're focused on it, you know, for the, each semester, that's the tuition that you would be charged and then your scholarship would be a, applied for that school specific tuition. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, all of our dual degrees are of course a little bit different. So 
um, we are happy to provide you with some more specific information um, on each of those dual degrees. So again, theme of the day is just just reach out to us, email us, um, and we can we can get to know you and help you um, and answer your your specific questions. So I think. That was the last question we we had pre-submitted that we didn't get to with our other slide content. Um, so Zizi, um, are you able to go back one slide to all of the contact information? Yeah, of course. Perfect, perfect. Um, so we will end there. Um, again, get in touch with us. We are so grateful that you took the time to watch this today, um, or if you're watching it on recording later, um, we're so grateful that you've taken the time and we're grateful for your interest in the Brown School. Um, we are so proud of our MSW students, what they're doing here, what, what they've done after graduation. Um, Zizi is a graduate of our MSW program and she's wonderful. So she would be a great person to talk to as well um, about her experience, but um, we really invite you just to, to connect with us, to connect with a, a, a current student um, and let us know how we can help you in, in this process. Um, Zizi, anything you wanna say before we sign off? Yeah, just um, really appreciate your time here, you know, with us for our first info section to learn about Master of Social Work program at the Brown School. And we are looking forward to hear from you to help you to answer your questions and read your application in the few, um, near you know, future and good luck for the um, fall 2024 cycle. Awesome. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.